Hello viewers, it's Cynthia Michael from Screen View, bringing my 494 podcast. This is my 494 podcast, and like always, I'm going to speak very loudly, very clearly, and very slowly, in case you don't understand me. Also, I'll try to do my best not to breathe too hard during this audio podcast recording as well, not to cause any audio feedback as well. And finally, if you're under 18, this, this audio podcast will... No change for adult language. So basically, once again, if you're under 18, this audio, this audio podcast recording will change some, will change some, will change some adult language if you're under 18. Now, if you're over 18, that means you're good to watch this audio podcast recording here. So basically, you could, if you're over 18, that means you're good to watch this audio podcast recording. So anyway, let's get into the whole story. Let's get into the topic of this, of this, of, of this podcast. Oh my god, the first season of Stargirl has ended. So, so those of you who watch it, now I gotta say, I love this series. This is the best secret. This is the best. I believe this is the best friendly secret house show I've seen since, since The Flash. So uh, basically, this is a good uh, superhero show. You can that uh, if you want to watch a good, a good, you know, a superhero show that you know, you know that the fan can watch together. Then, you know, Stargirl is it. So basically, honestly, oh my God, there is so much to go go over in this. I'm just gonna try. There's so much information going over to go over in this. And this, and this, and this podcast about 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 the about Star Girl season one and and about the Easter eggs to that the Easter eggs in season one that will tell us what's going to happen in season two. Oh gosh, honestly, I really, I really, I think the creator of Star Girl, the guy who created the Star Girl comic book, is also the showrunner for the Star Girl t- for, st- for the Star Girl show. So basically, it's kind of weird for honestly, uh, it's kind of weird for a uh, for a well for a creator. Uh, it's not it's not kind of it's like you know it's kind of it's kind of it, it's kind of this is like the first time we actually see a. Co- a creator of a comic book series actually is a showrunner for uh, for for the for for the comic book series that he helped create. It. Well, it's not kind of weird, but you know, like the Boondocks and whatnot. But you know, <laughs> there is. So basically, I really enjoy this. I really enjoy. I really enjoy the first season of Star Girl. It touched on so many editions. This show talks t- t- on so many uh, so, so many topics such as you know the uh, such as you know it's you know um, such as you know sex thing if you uh, you know sex thing could be bad you know about about uh, about uh, about abuse about about dealing with your emotions uh, about uh, about what's right and wrong and also about about what the what the family and uh, what the what the family really means to you. So basically, it touches on a lot of subjects. So basically, so basically, I gotta say, a lot of things. There are a lot of things I want to go over in it, over in this podcast, but I have to keep. I have to keep this. I have to get to the point. So basically. So, honestly, this show made me get, this show got me, uh, not only this show was, had good action in it, it also had a very good story. So, basically, this, was, this uh, Star Girl made me feel so, sorry, not only for the heroes, uh, heroes and their families, and also for the villains and their families as well. So, basically, it's like, you know, at one hand, one hand you know, the, you know, even though the bad guys, are, are are up to the up to no good, but at the same time, like you know, you, you, same time you know, you get the reason why they why they doing this. You know, you you see you, know, you see them as parents. You know, try to teach their kids. You know, they want the best the best for their children. So basically, like you know, I think that each I think the heroes I think the heroes in Star and the villains and and the villains in Star also have. Had equal to 
and like you know, you felt sorry for some of them. You felt sorry for the felt sorry for them. You know, they wanted, they want, they wanted you want you. They wanted their children to be to be safe, you know, and grow up and grow up in a in a world in a nice safe world. So basically, blah blah blah. But on uh, other hand, on uh, other hand, the when it comes to some of the parents of. Uh, uh, of the villains and some of the parents of the of uh, of the heroes, they, uh, you know, or family, they were they were complete assholes. Like like Bane Ray's father, he was a I gotta say he was he was a real asshole. You know, him Dragon Master, Shit's father, Dragon Master, he was. The, he was the second biggest asshole in, in here. Well, I believe he. Oh, I can't get that. He was the third biggest asshole in this parrot. Parrot. When it comes to the villains and whatnot, and when it comes down, I think the. the I really felt sorry for Alanda's. Felt sorry for Alanda, aka the new Wildcat, about how, about how her family treated her act, treating her after she, you know. After those sex texts, you know, was you know, were for Senate throughout the school, throughout the throughout all of the students throughout the school for the phones and whatnot. I think that was kind of fucked up. But uh, also at the same time, I'm kind of worried about Alana and Kay Wildcat. She did kill Brain Wave, so basically he. Um, she killed Bang Ray Senior, and he's like you know, like you know, I know that you know, but I'm kind of worried that you know she didn't, she didn't felt any type of way after she killed Bang Ray. Actually, she killed Bang Ray after Bang Ray killed his own son. So basically, I felt like you know, I'm really worried about Wildcat. What's gonna happen to her next year? Because she didn't felt any type of more, it, it felt any type of a morph after killing Brother. As for Rick, Rick's, Rick's motivation was to was to kill Grundy this whole time, you know, and he, he like, you know, and he after after almost oh, after almost succeeding in killing Grundy, he realized how hopeless Grundy was and took pity on him and let, and let Grundy live. So basically, Rick was full anger. He he wanted revenge for for. Grundy for for Grundy killing his parents, uh, uh, parents. So basically, like Rick, I think that was some good character to benefit for Rick, right there. That like, you know, finally realized that uh, 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 that revenge is not not the answer to making you feel good. It's about a set. Uh, uh, and start uh, accepting what happened, and and learning how to forgive, you know, how to forgive, you know, that and forgive, you know, forgive you know, the person who murdered, who murdered his parents. Grundy, but uh, but I think Pat, uh, I like the relationship between. Stargirl and and uh, I like the uh, team Courtney and Pat. So basically, like Courtney, Courtney was kind of like a bitch towards Pat. You know, Pat was trying to trying to be a father figure to her. Like you know, was trying to do his best to be to be you know to be a good dad for her, uh, be a good dad towards Courtney. But Courtney was for for the first half of uh, the first half. She was acting like you know, like, you know, like a stuffed up bitch. But you know, after a while, so once they start to finally get to know each other, at the end, Courtney, I realized the fact that Courtney, that Courtney, and we finally accepted Pat as as her father. So basically, that that moment right there made me cry. So basically, Courtney finally realizing that you know. That she finally accepted Pat as her dad, and also and also accepting Mike as her as her brother as well. So basically, that that those two moments made me cry.
So basically, but let's get into though. Let's get into some more. Let's get into some some big Easter eggs after uh, for the season. Now, after the after you know, after the after Courtney and Jay stop stop the injustice society from you know from you know basically brainwashing America. We show the shade you know, uh, back at the back at the injustice headquarters in the tunnel. Saying that, oh, oh, I, I know that I still, uh, I know that the I still so and uh, and others plan will fail. So basically, like the charity is to, it's a part of the, it's a part of the injustice that they that we, we had not seen him, we did not see him yet. So for some reason he left the injustice society. Now he shows up after after the injustice society plan fell. He's like you know, I think he might be, he might you know he might you know might might be the might be a major villain for it for the second season. As for sure, you know, she killed her father father, I can't blame her for for doing so. I can't blame her for doing so. But she but she did kill her mother. So basically like, you know, I can't blame her for killing her father because her because her father was an asshole. But you know you know, she got she she thought she had some stone with some evil what an evil what an evil being inside it. So basically, she might be a might be a a major might be one of the she might be a threat a major villain in the second season of Stargirl. So basically, blah But the biggest Easter egg of the biggest the biggest to the, uh, the W. Uh, WTF moment in uh, of Stargirl is, is that Starman is alive. So basically, we saw Starman at at Pat's old, old apartment looking for Pat. So basically, basically, I'm I'm wondering how they're going to explain that how Starman how how Starman is still alive. So basically, the, so basically, it's confirmed, it's confirmed that you know that Starman is still alive. So basically, he's looking for Pat. So basically, so basically, I can't wait to see what's going to happen with that. You know, how they're going to explain Starman is still alive. You know, uh, how they're going to explain how Starman survived his fate of wounds. You know, that he came back by magic, or he's from, or or, or the Starman from a different Earth, some sort of shit like that. But still. But still, but the things I really wanted to see is see at the end of Stalker is is three things. One, best uh, you know, best you know, best best parents spending more time with her. Two, Rick, Rick and the others to be teaching 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 Rick uncle to keep his hands to himself. And three is is a lot of parents. To start, you know, finally, you know, stop treating her for like a, like a, like a, like a, like a nobody after she screwed up. So basically, those are the main three things I wanted to see at the end of Stargirl. Like, you know, you know, I like to see best, I like to see best parents spend more time with her. I like to see Rick and uh, Rick and the others, you know, teach his uncle a lesson to keep his hands to himself and stop beating on Rick. And the third thing is, I wish that, you know, I wish that, you know, I wish that Alana's parents were, were to, to were to stop treating her like, uh, like, to treat her like shit after, after that whole sex and the whole sexy incident happened to her. So basically, those are the main thing, the main three things I want to see at the end of Stargirl. But you know, but you know, maybe, maybe we get to see these things. Uh, you know, maybe these things will be addressed in season two. But you know, but. I think the main there were two main messages in this in this whole series. 
that that heroes do come in many different types, that and also and so do family. It, it doesn't matter if you if you it doesn't matter if you're not if you're a lady or not. You know, family comes in many different types as well. And also, I think the third main thing is if you in. It's about uh, re about uh, about uh, leaving yourself, about believing yourself, and, and if you believe in yourself, that you you your uh, your dreams will uh, nothing can stop you, and your dreams will come true. So basically, you know. So basically, you know, this is, those are the main those are the main messages that Star Girl was, you know, for Star Girl were being, you know, were being shown for Star Girl that family comes in many different types and so do superheroes. And if you believe in yourself, you know, your dreams will come will come true. So basically. So basically, like you know, so basically, I can I can't wait to start to see Star Girls. I can't wait to see. I can't wait for season two. Now, like I said before, like you know, about Star Girl moving to the CW for season two, I think the CW won't do a. I think Star Girl season two won't be. I think I think that the CW won't fuck up Star Girl season two. You know, you know. I think the move to the from the from the student service to until and, and, and uh, on to the CW won't won't mess up the whole the, won't mess up Star Girl season two. So so basically, we just have to wait and see uh, how how things will change in Star Wars season two uh, on the CW. But you know, so so this is my view. So basically, you know, this is the, this is the main points. You know, this is the main. You know, this is my opinion of the pros and cons of Star Girl season one. You know, you know, you know. What do you guys think about Star Girl season one? Was it good? Was it was it good? Was it great? Or was it just okay? Or just nah? Please let me know with the comments below this podcast. So anyway, it's Cynthia Michael from Screw Sign off. One.